On our last episode yesterday, I, I talked about spanking in our schools, which is corporal punishment. We looked at a few news clips and looked into several, looked at 19, and looked at 19 states that allow corporal punishment. We also looked at an episode from King of the Hill about Peggy who was fired for spanking. And as we said, spanking is still legal in schools in 19 states, including Texas. And some schools have banned corporal punishment in their schools. We showed you a clip from a Florida mom, from a Florida principal who was paid, who was getting paid on administrative leave for spanking. That was a year ago. We'll get to that in just a minute. But we'll get to that in just a minute. But um, I want to quickly get into COVID, real quick. Nothing new here. Nothing new here today. Seven day average is August 4th. There's over 4,600 people in ICU, 39,000 people hospitalized, 74.9 one dose since the third, and 70.8 million since the third vaccinated. US, 704, 223 million, and 67.7 of the population is really vaccinated. Okay. So, this is what needs to happen here. Like I keep telling you guys every time, we need to stay, we gotta stay socially distant. We need to wear masks at all times. At all times. So yeah, we need to make sure make sure everyone gets gets safe. Vaccinations, social distance. I mean vaccinations. I mean, if it's against your religion, go against your religion. Do what you want. It doesn't matter. If you gotta go against your religion, go against your religion. For all I care, if you go against your religion, that's not that's not gonna be your problem. It's not gonna be my problem if you go against your religion. It's gonna be the problem of everyone else if you decide not to get vaccinated. If you're, I mean, defy your pastor. Do whatever you please. If it pleases you, defy your pastor. Do whatever you want. Leave the church. Do whatever pleases inside your heart. Hand washing. Again, it's not that simple. Just hand wash. 20 seconds. Soap. Water. 20 seconds in there. 20 seconds only. The water should not exceed 110 degrees. Just like we're making bread. If you're buying transportation, take precautions. Masks. Social distance. Everything. The same thing if you're outside. Also, if you're quarantined, you need to stay in that quarantine area for a minimum of five days. Do not leave quarantine. If you need, the only time you can leave is if you're going to take out the trash or go check your mail. That's it. After the fifth day, get tested the second time. Tested the first time, quarantine. Second time, get tested. Test it again. If you're positive, you need to let them know. If uh, if you're negative, then you can then you have to show your boss, your your manager the paperwork, and then you can be allowed back into work. Also, if your child's under two, no masks at all. If your if someone you know has a medical condition, then you need to let them know be let them know beforehand. And you'll be exempt from those medical conditions. Also, disinfect your area at all times. Baby wipes, Lysol, works best. Alright, going back to spanking, going back to, going back to spanking in our schools. As we talked about yesterday, 19 states, in 19 states, it is, it's legal to spank. In some states, it's illegal. And we've watched a clip from 
on my channel about a girl who was spanked. And earlier this season, we focused in on spanking your kids. I'll give you my take on spanking in our schools in just a minute. But there's probably an old saying like, spare the rod and spoil the child. We also focus in on a five-year-old who was paddled. But, uh, and then we, and we also showed you a clip. Now, I know everyone has uh, their opinions about that. We'll tell you about that later on. But coming up next, the Young Turks have, get their, share their opinions about a high school girl who was spanked. Now, keep in mind, this was the same video I showed you. This was the same video I showed you. With Jada Watt. A special report from WJTV 12 News about Spare the Rod, Spell the Child and the spanking bill in our in in public schools. But what? But doesn't that affect everyone, every school, and every in everything, every school in this country? That's coming up. One of the videos I played for you yesterday for a couple of punish back to school month was about a Texas girl who was spanked. There was a second girl that was spanked. Before we play that, here's what the Young Turks said nine years ago when the story broke. Yo, have you tried to be? And keep in mind, and I'll just give you my opinion about spanking in just in later in this broadcast. Because I know a lot about spanking. Santos uh, from Texas got in trouble for allowing another student to cheat off her paper. Now, she claims that she didn't know another student was cheating off her paper. However, because of this, uh, administrators at Springtown High School decided that they would give her two full day in school suspensions. Well, instead of getting those suspensions, she opted for a spanking, literally. Let's take a look. After she got caught helping another student cheat, Taylor got a paddle to the backside. I still have whelps on me today. Taylor and her mother actually chose corporal punishment over a day-long suspension. They're not outraged she was spanked, but by who did it? Her male vice principal. <laughs> okay, usual I, reporting stuff that I love. <laughs> but the male vice principal. She got paddled to the backside. <laughs> it's also it's also insanely distracting. To see her like put huge spoonfuls of cereal in her mouth. <laughs> like she seems like she's all right. She's sitting on her ass and everything. Like when you said, "Let's go to the video." I think a lot of our teenager audience and probably the pervy uh, audience as well was like, "Okay, no, no, no. Okay, it's not that kind of show." Okay. Now, having said that, would I have my teenage daughter spanked by her male vice principal? Hell. Frickin' no! <laughs> Would you have your kids spanked by anyone? I, I, I think corporal punishment is stupid to begin with, right? But what's exactly. amazing about this story is not just the fact that this happened at this one school. This is happening all over the country. In fact, let's take a look at the, another, uh, the next video that explains how many states are still using corporal punishment within their schools. Texas is one of 19 states that allows corporal punishment in schools, usually as long as a parent agrees. The school superintendent tells ABC News in both cases, his administrators follow Texas law, but they violated their own school policy, which states spanking a student can only be done by an employee of the same set. So that's their school policy. That's not a statewide policy. So it's totally okay, according to the state, for a male vice principal to spank a female student as long as the parent is okay with it. So now, like, originally the policy is that it's not supposed to be cross-sex, so that only the older women are supposed to spank the younger women. And, okay, <laughs> and what? Anyway, uh, but now the principal is saying, hey, you know what? Let's just change that. Since we got into trouble because a male did it, 
So they just change it so that ML can spank your people. Right. After the story broke, the superintendent said, you know what, uh, this policy isn't right. We should allow, uh, you know, male administrators to spank female students if they if they choose. No, this is all uh, madness. It's ridiculous. No, no. Look, look, first of all, on the issue of spanking overall, you're against it entirely. And you know what, you'll get a lot of times is people will say, like, I got spanked, I got beat all the time, what's the big deal? And people <laughs> saying that like nine out of ten times will be like seriously disturbed folks. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, that was the outcome? Okay, now I'm playing, I'm playing. A lot of people got spanked, it was no big deal. I got spanked a couple of times, uh-oh. Okay. Hey, but look, this isn't the parents doing the spanking. This is some school administrator or principal or something. That's crazy. I don't want any school person spanking my kids. And then second of all, look, there's a, there is a pervy wanker a, a, a angle here. You're telling me that a male vice principal is going to get into spanking my 15-year-old daughter? Oh, hell no. No way. No, no, no. That that's, takes my creep meter all the way to 128. And maybe it's wrong for me to point this out, but it's the reality. Is it a coincidence that she's a very attractive 15-year-old student? Now, look, now, to be fair, she asked for it. She did ask she for it. And, and I'm, I'm angry <laughs> that the mother was like, okay, sure, let's spank my daughter. You're going to allow another adult to spank your daughter. It blows my mind. Now, then they got buyer's remorse once the guy went to work, right? And he apparently put the blisters and the welts, etc., in there, right? And by the way, how hard did he hit her to do that? Jesus, that's really stupid. And I can understand, they probably thought it was going to be a light spanking. And come to find out, it was a heavy spanking. And so, anyway, all this is ridiculous. Because the paddles to kids, what is this, the 18th century? If it was, I'd run down there before it spanked. you go, get the paddle out. All right, you ready? And then, oh, where's the paddle? And then, right here, run! And then it's like, get back here! <laughs> I'm out of breath. Get him! He stole the paddle! You'll never spank you, dumb sucker! <laughs> and then, I mean, like, like, I really laughed at some point. Let me tell you, spanking is not funny. It's not funny to watch a girl get spanked. I don't even know. I don't even know. All right, this is from the Associated Press where it got drawn. It's going to cause controversy. It's probably the same thing to wear. It's the same thing as the as I showed these two clips. And keep in mind, this isn't funny. This is very serious. I don't even know why I was laughing earlier, but uh, this uh, there, Joe. So take a look. <clears throat> In Springtown, Texas, a controversy over corporal punishment. She had the imprint of a paddle on her butt. Paddling is allowed in Texas unless a parent says no in writing. And when Kathy Watts' teenage daughter was recently written up for misbehaving, that was the punishment. And I think he did make the slot hard purposely. No, that I'm not sure what his reason would be. I just think he did it real purposely. The solid red. I took pictures of it. The next morning, she got up, it was still red. The teen's mom is okay with corporal punishment, but not by an adult of the opposite sex. I was under the impression that there'd be a female in there. Well, that was my first thought, there'd be a female in there. I did not think I had to worry about anything. There was not a female in there, it was two men. The state law does not address the student's gender or the educators. And what does the teen think? If that's going to happen to anyone, then I'm, I think your parents should be the one to do it. The controversy may get larger before it dies down. Because of a shortage of female administrators in the district, the school board voted Monday to allow administrators to paddle students of the opposite sex. Brad Thomas, The Associated Press. Short female staff? No, 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 no. You need to have a female teacher come in there and spank the female. Not have a male. Not, I mean, it needs to be the same sex. The law should, 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 the law should change to where you can allow corporal punishment, but the law should also say it needs to be within the same sex. If violating the law, they could be arrested. They could be arrested for, for the same sex. I mean, that's this pop. That's to me. That's discrimination. To me, that's all. That's all discrimination. All right. There's more spanking when we come back, especially. The spanking bill. 
from CBS4 Rio Grande Valley and the special report from WJTV from Mississippi. Stay with us. Updating Uvalde now. Uvalde is under security. What we know about the key figures connected to the shooting response. Here's what we know about Pete, Pedro Pete Arandano, Don McLaughlin, the city's school district, and other as stories continue to change the news. I mean, all these are connected to Pete Arandano. His connect, I mean, title is the uh, Conseil Independent Uvalde School District Police Officer, the Mayor of Uvalde, Colonel Stephen Mc, McCraw, Lieutenant Mario Morano Pargas, I can't pronounce that, Manny Gutierrez, and Uvalde, constantly independent school in the Uvalde School District. I mean, I'm not going to go length into detail, but I am going to point out two, two of them, which is Pete Arandano, was one of the first officers to interrupt elementary after the gunfire started at school as school police chief. Arandano was the de facto incident commander of the scene. Same as Gears and Law Enforcement Analyst said. Wrote to the active shooter and policy, including himself as incident commander, according to the State House Investigative Report. He's under security because we've been investigating investigators a lot. Enforcement experts have land based on his decision to not immediately enter the classroom, but where the gunman was hold up, held up, and hold up, hold it up instead. It took more than 70 minutes. The latest of this is now he's been he's, he's placed on paid administrative leave as school district police chief. The connection massacre from the mayor is that. So, Don, so again, Don's under security. The latest, he's still mailing Uvalde. He told the mayor of Uvalde, he told CNN he's worried about a cover up. The colonel, Stephen McCall, he's under security because he, because they're criticized. The latest on this, well, he's he's an abject failure. It was an abject failure. He's under security because under scrutiny. I mean. I mean, sorry, not under security, under scrutiny. Because of the police body cam footage, that's why he's under scrutiny. The principal's under scrutiny because of a report for the Texas House Committee. The latest on this is that he, June July 25th, he was suspended without pay. Her attorney, Ricardo Ocello, said three days later she was reinstated. And the school district board is under scrutiny because some of members expressed anger and frustration as to why or not has not been fired yet. And the latest in the July 25th school meeting, the superintendent announced several new safety measures for the upcoming school year. Everything needs to be taken very seriously. So now we know what happened. As for Oxford... Michigan Live, the attorney's security guard didn't try to stop Oxford shooting because thought it was a drill. This wasn't a drill. If it was a school shooting, this was not a drill. Try to get that right. Now, Crumley's trial is set for 2023, and the parents' trial is set for October, and we'll keep you posted on what's going on. When we continue, more of spanking in our schools. First, from WJTV12, and from Vice. The question is, should teachers use corporal punishment on students? Stay tuned. Welcome back. Tonight, we're, talk we're continuing our corporal punishment in our schools as part of our back to school month, which is something we have not covered. Because I was afraid that, I was afraid that I'd be, I don't know. But, um, I mean, this is continuing. But, uh, the question, the question really is, should, we, should there be corporal punishment in our in our schools, the answer well, the answer is from 19 states. Here's a special report from WJ. Controversial WJ12. practice.
practice of paddling in schools. This model of discipline got its start in Europe. And in Mississippi, more than 70 school districts still think corporal punishment is the best way to handle behavior problems. Well, there are many who think otherwise. WJTV 12's Linnea Lewis joins us now in the studio and gives us a closer look at this debate. Linnea. Well, corporal punishment is legal in 19 states. 85% of Mississippi counties still have it. But there's a much heated debate about whether it does more harm than good. I talked with two school districts with two different ways of doing things and one parent who thinks the time for paddling has passed. In an 82-county state, Mississippi has more than 70 counties that allow corporal punishment in the schoolhouse. First, Madison County schools where paddling is permitted. As a school district, our number one goal is to educate students. And part of that is having an orderly, disciplined classroom. Tucked away in the Madison Station Elementary School's principal's office is a wooden paddle. They didn't show it to us, but we know it's there. District spokesperson Jean Wright says the paddle is rarely brought out and there are strict rules when it is. The first step is to contact parents and discuss with them what they think the best approach would be to solve the issue. Um, we have our policy right here that you can see in our student handbook. Parents must be contacted, no students can be present, and there must be a certified staff member and administrator present during the punishment. If a family decides they want to opt out of corporal punishment as a discipline option, they can absolutely do that. We request that parents send in a letter so that be put in the student's file. Holmes County Consolidated Schools does things differently. Former Holmes County student, now superintendent, Dr. James Henderson started this past July. His first order of business, abolishing corporal punishment. There was a 5-0 vote um, pending that we execute with fidelity our PBIS system. Um, and as long as we were to do that, then they were comfortable with um, uh, the removal of corporal punishment. Henderson says it wasn't easy. At first, some parents and faculty members weren't too thrilled about the removal. If you continue to uh, physically abuse a child or spank a child, whip a child, paddle a child, that's what that child will know. And that child will grow up doing the exact same thing. It also in uh, increases uh, aggression. In Smith County, Marcy Massey agrees. She grew up getting paddled in school. Now she's a mother of two and doesn't want the same for her children. Massey claims procedures surrounding the punishment make her feel uneasy. According to the principal, um, if an incident happens, they call you and um, they ask you if you want your child to be paddled or get a three-day suspension. And I'm like, well, what if you can't get in touch with the parents? What do you do then? Throughout the years, Massey says she's found no benefit to corporal punishment and she hopes to see something meaningful put in place. These kids need therapy, legit therapy, not just a paddling. Like, they need someone to talk to about these issues. Like, why are they doing this? Why do you think this is okay? Spare the rod, spoil the child. A debate still to be settled here in the Magnolia State. Now, after reaching out to all 82 Mississippi counties, I did find those districts practicing corporal punishment had written rules that parents must consent to the punishment first before administering a paddling. Now, I put this online, and there's been a lot of debate about it. Mm -hmm. I yeah, a lot of debate about whether that still works or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. and I think the big thing is uh, talking with parents and seeing is that the best option, punishment, corporal punishment, or... You know, well, we, we do know that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that corporal punishment in schools be abolished in all states by law and that alternative forms of student behavior management be used. Now, we do have them saying that, quote, we believe that corporal punishment may affect adversely a student's self-image and school achievement and that it may contribute to disruptive and violent student behavior. And of course, this is now leading to our poll question of the day. We so really, should there be cold punishment in our schools? I'll give you the answer in just a minute. But now nine years ago, a spanking bill was introduced in the Rio Grande Valley. Push to ban corporal punishment in Texas public schools. Paddling is still allowed, and one valley superintendent calls the proposal to change that a swat in the wrong direction. Students who misbehave in the San Benito CISD can be spanked. The procedure is you put your hands on your desk, 
Tony Lamone still remembers paddling with this customized grip over the course of a decade as principal. I'm just going to hit you here in the rear. It's going to be two swats, and we're just going to come in and... A superintendent today, he still calls it an effective form of discipline under the right guidelines. It's an option that we need to have, not for all students, but for some students. Uh, the one student that perhaps once they're swatted will never do that again. Texas is one of 19 states that currently allows corporal punishment in the classrooms. But a Houston area legislator wants to change all that, making the practice illegal. State Representative Alma Allen filed the bill. Her proposal would eliminate physical tactics of discipline like hitting, spanking, and paddling from the education code. Parents can currently opt out of corporal punishment with written notice. Those at Dr. Cash Elementary have mixed reviews about the all-out ban. I used to get spanked in school, so, you know. And how did it, did it work nah, for you? Nah, I didn't. Just got more violence, you know, like, more angry into you. Not even at our house do we do it, so why why should somebody else? We all have our way of uh, dis disciplining our kids, and sometimes that's one of the ways it gets your attention. To spank or not to spank at school. I happen to be old school. I still believe that there's a place for corporal punishment. That is the question legislators will face. State Representative Alma Allen, who authored the bill, wants schools to come into the 21st century. Over the phone, she tells us that the law needs to change to make the classrooms a more positive place for children, free from any fear of a beating. Now it's your turn. The final, the, here's the this final. This is a type of punishment that uh, I think keeps a kid in school, because if I suspend a kid out of school suspension for two or three days, I don't know where he's at, and neither does a parent most of the time, especially in a rural area. Spare the rod and spoil the student. Supporters argue its roots go back to biblical times, but critics contend the time for corporal punishment is long gone. North Carolina is one of a handful of states where local school leaders decide whether or not to spank their students. Tonight, does it work or should it be banned? Bill O'Neill now with the story. Our investigation found surprisingly little information about corporal punishment in North Carolina. The state does not keep track of how many students are paddled each year. And in fact, we found that even some local school administrators had no idea it was still going on in their own schools. Our investigation found smaller rural schools with mostly white students are the ones using corporal punishment in the Piedmont Triad. And I got proven situations that work. Our community supports it, and that's why we use it. Tony George, principal at Star Mile High School in Yadkin County, says he's seen corporal punishment turn kids around, citing one former student as an example who's now become a successful member of the community. He comes by and see, to see us every week to thank us for what we did for him. That's only one situation. I'm not saying it works for everybody, but it worked for him. We found 11 school districts in our area have corporal punishment on the books. Last year, eight of those districts used it. Three students were paddled in Randolph County, eight in Mount Airy, 12 in Alamance County, 15 in Wilkes, 35 in Davidson, 67 in Stokes, 80 in Yankton, and 86 in Surrey County. Whoa. What? Critics argue there's little research to support claims corporal punishment is an effective way to change a child's behavior. Three. Gary Schaefer of the UNC School of Social Work says schools are supposed to be safe havens for students. He questions what kind of message school administrators are sending when they use corporal punishment. Here's an adult taking on a child and correcting the behavior by pulling them, by hitting them. Corporal punishment critics offer several examples where they say school administrators went too far. On a website promoting the banning of corporal punishment, there are several graphic pictures of boys with bruised buttocks. Similar pictures, which we will not show on television, were used in an effort to ban corporal punishment in North Carolina this year. The effort failed. UNC sociologist Gary Schaefer says the disturbing pictures tell only half the story. The kids that tend to get hit tend to be the more disenfranchised students in the school anyway. You're dealing with self-image. Um, you're dealing with all the other kids that know, know what happened to you. 
The school principals we talked with, like Jeff Wallace at Forbush High School in Yadkin County, admit it's no secret when a student comes to the office to get paddled. Do you think it's embarrassing for that student? His peers know that he has been brought into the principal's office and, and paddled. Do you think it's embarrassing for that? I'm sure it runs the gamut of, of some would be embarrassed to the point of some would walk out in their, their macho state and saying it didn't hurt or that's okay. I, I'm sure it runs the gamut of the full gamut. I would think so. Do you think it hurts? Probably. Sure. I think it helps a kid to be embarrassed sometimes of what he's done. Because, you know, me as a as a 48-year-old adult, I've been embarrassed of some things that I've done in the past and I didn't go back and do them again. A recent vote on corporal punishment in Alamance County evoked strong emotions from parents to the school board. Hannah Mathis of Burlington writes, quote, I am now 43 years old and am in therapy trying to heal from corporal punishment inflicted on me by teachers and my father. Misty Steed of Snow Camp writes, quote, children do not have any respect for something that used to scare us as children to death, getting in trouble at school and going to the principal's office. Amy Jo Johnson of Mebbin writes, quote, I had no idea it was still lawful to use corporal punishment in the Alamance Burlington school system, and I find it very disturbing and upsetting. Our investigation found Mary Jo Johnson wasn't the only one surprised. Alamance Superintendent Randy Bridges and school board member Jackie Cole admit they didn't know students in their local schools were still being spanked. What was your reaction when you found out that kids there were being spanked? I, I was a little surprised, to be honest, and um, I'm glad to see we've made that change. The Alamance County School Board voted unanimously to ban corporal punishment five weeks ago. Critics say what little information exists nationally about corporal punishment shows that boys are more likely to be spanked than girls and minorities are more likely to be hit than non-minorities. North Carolina doesn't keep track of such information. Whether you're for or against it, I think that kind of information is important to have. Supporters like Tony George say they know from first-hand experience, both as a student who was paddled and as an administrator who does the paddling, that corporal punishment works. Now who's to say it'll work five or ten years down the road? I don't know. Because, you know, society and times are changing. But right now, you know, we're not going to fix it because it's not broke. It's something that, that's, that helps us at our schools. School principals who use corporal punishment tell us they only do so with the parent's permission and only as an alternative to out-of-school suspension. Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News. Thanks, Bill. Visitors to WXII12.com have been sounding off on this controversy. One writes in support of paddling. It is a parent's job to protect their children and to teach them right from wrong. You are not doing your child or anyone else a favor by not punishing them for bad behavior. Another viewer disagrees, writing in saying, Schools are so used to punishing kids by spanking, they had no alternative punishment set in place. You need to think about the lasting impact that your actions will have on a child's life. You can add your voice to this debate inside of WXII12.com. That's also where you can watch Bill O'Neill's story again and learn more about the local schools that still use corporal punishment. My thoughts about spanking in just a moment. Thank you guys for watching this, uh, watching the conclusion to our corporal punishment in schools as part of our back to school month. Now, the question is, do I support spanking in our schools or disciplinary spanking our kids? I'm not all for one. I'm not for spanking in our schools. It's not an effective disciplinary tool. You remember earlier this season when I changed the name, cut me a break, I devoted a, a whole half hour to spanking. And I gave you my reason why, and I'll tell you again. I learned this from Dr. Phil. It confuses the child and it teaches them nothing. If you're hitting a five-year-old, you need a two-year-old, three-year-old, five-year-old, ten-year-old, that's confusing. Like, y'all supposed to, you're supposed to love me. I went to you for help. I went to you when I was falling down, broken hearted. And now, you're inflicting pain on me. It's like, you're inflicting pain on me. But nope, it's like, it works for my child. You may, there may be debates on this issue. I mean, in California, it's against the law to spank in California, like in, like skateboarding. People who just hear that, they'll be like, I don't give a shit. 
I'm beating the hell out of my kids. <laughs> That's what they say. I don't give a shit. I'm beating, I'm beating my kids. I'm beating my kids. I care about the laws. It's confusing. I mean, if you love your children, you love your children, you love your children, all that, blah, blah, blah. That's what I understand. Now, uh, finally, I want to stress this out. I'm not all for a couple of watchmen in our schools. Especially with parents' permission because uh, we lead them down the line. Abusive relationships, they, like, you take your hit and you're showing and it's okay to hit. That's what, that's what being taught. Discipline is not about hitting. It's about teaching children what's right and what's wrong. A lot of surveys show that. They don't want to explain discipline issues. Time out, like I talked about before in that episode. Just try to understand. Love and nurture your kids. Love and nurture them. But don't hit them. Love, don't hit. That's the key. That's all for this edition of Give Me Break Saturday. We will see you again for Give Me a Break Monday. And for all of us here, give me a break and YouTube. Good night, everyone.